Not good, God. I'm good, Marty. You What's good? Up? What's happening, yeah. man? So good to get get you back on the hotline. You know. Yeah, my bad. No, I saw gravy. We we talked about doing a segment, so I want to kind of talk a little bit about the word is bond segment, and that's gonna be a okay, segment that we up. that we gonna um actually get you on film, but we kind of prepping them now until I come out there and, and, and get the film thing going. So a lot of people had a lot of questions from the interviews that you that I put up. Okay. Yeah. And so people kept bringing up, you had some situation with Ice Cube? Yes. Is that, is that something right, so that you, you can... Me, I mean, so let me know when you want me to elaborate or, you know... Oh, we rolling. I mean, we ro I don't... Okay, I mean, so how, how did it start? What happened with Ice Cube and how did it start? Okay, well, how I really, you know, came in contact with uh, Ice Cube and them. Uh, first of all, we was out, it was like 1989, and uh, it was like Big Daddy Kane, uh, Dougie Fresh, Russell Simmons, Keith Sweat, Teddy Riley. We all was out there for, I think, like the Grammys or one of them shows. And uh, they had a panel about this group called NWA that was saying niggas and bitches and this was at the time, you know, this was the era of the gods and her. So we was on some peace and peace queen, peace black man and all that. Right. So, um, you know, it, this panel was about NWA and what they was doing. So I was on the panel, Chuck D, Sir Mix a Lot, and Cassie 18. And, um, you know, so Dre, Easy Cube, all of them was there. This was in Long Beach at the Radisson Hotel. So we was out there and everything, and uh, we, uh, you know, so I was like, yo, I said, well, you know, it's like this hip hop, and we started it, you know, it started from New York in the Bronx, man, and it's like, you know, I had never heard their music before. Right. So, you know, I'm coming from a god by, it's like me, Rakim, Kane, Brand Nubians up wasn't out yet. So it was only like few gods out there, but, you know, hip hop knew about the gods. Right. So Wu Tang wasn't out, none of that shit. So it's like, you know, I said, well, yeah, man. I said, yo, you know, I, we just got a problem with the nigga and the bitch thing, you know, teaching this to the babies, man, because everything we do in hip hop is going to reflect to the babies. So, you know, like, y'all coming out with all niggas and bitches shit, you know, that's really, like, we ain't feeling that in New York, and I doubt if that shit going to play. So Q was like, yeah, but you just said nigga and bitch. So I was like, oh, okay, all right, you're going to be playing on semantics and shit, all right, so boom. So we go out, you know, we the, the panel is over. So we this is what to you told lobby. Cube. This is what you told Ice Cube. Yeah, this is what I told Ice Cube because he was like the front runner of the NWA. Like, easy wasn't saying shit. Yeah. So then when we go out, Dre come over to me, and Dre is like, yo, man, what's going on, man? I'm Dr. Dre. I'm from the group you was talking about, NWA, man, and I think before you judge us and criticize us, you should hear the music. So he gave me the tape, the straight out of Compton joint. Right. So I said, okay, well, you know, I'm out here for a couple of days. I'm going to listen to it and everything, and I'm going to get back to you. Now, where was so this I at? I know you said it was at a panel, but where was this at? It was in Long Beach, oh, Long California. Beach. Long Beach, okay, good. Long Beach. At the Radisson Hotel. All right. And uh, so... You know, once I heard, you know, I had like a little 5.0 convertible rental joint. I was out there to shoot my video for uh, a song called um, It's a Heat Up. Okay. And so, you know, while I was out there, you know, Ice T, that was my dude out there and everything. So I said, you know, he hit me with a little OWAP, hit me with a little 9 mil and shit, and like, yo, do your numbers. Now, at this time, I was I was messing with Dub C and DJ Aladdin and Crazy Tunes. They was called um, Low Profile or Aladdin and Mad Circle. So Dub wasn't really fucking with Cube then, you know what I mean? Right. So you know they they running with me and I was I was messing with Dub and them Dub Crazy Tunes and Aladdin and I was messing with uh, King T. He was the first cat out there doing that uh, St. Nas commercial joint, but King T was hot on the underground side. King T is like a West Coast G-Rap. Okay. So, 
you know, we doing our numbers and things, so I'm in the low 5.0, and I'm just L.A., and I'm getting up early in the morning. So I said, yo, let me throw this shit up in there. So I, I threw a joint up in there, and, you know, it's like I'm starting that stay out of county. Crazy motherfucker. Right. <laughs> and so I was like, yo, the motherfucker is hot, though. Right. You feel me? It was a lot of profanity in it, but they were hot. So I was like, yo, they was they was like the the ghetto version of Public Enemy. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm checking out like samples, like how Hank Shockley and, and Keith Shockley, how they used to do. You know what I mean? So I'm checking them out. I'm checking out the sounds and all the mix. I'm like, damn, this shit is real tight. Like, yo, they boom. I had already knew about Easy E. You know, because he had the easy right. and all that. We used to see that on video music box, but we, I wasn't beat. You know, I was like, oh, that's just some West Coast dude. So anyway, long story short, I was feeling that. So I'm like, okay, boom, NWA. So I brought it back to New York. New York had nerds. So I brought it back to Brooklyn. I took it to Fort Green. Now, I mean, Fort Green Cats was like, nah, nah, yo, that shit is hot, son. That, that's some street shit. Boom, bang. I took it to Harlem. You know what I mean? Took it to the projects up in Harlem and everything. Took it to the Bronx, so everybody, like, took it to Patterson, New Jersey, like, everybody was feeling it. So they was like, nah, that's what the streets is about now. So I was like, okay, boom, bang. So now, that's 89. So in 1990, I guess Cube had beef with NWA. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, you being from New York, you remember back in the day, 42nd Street used to have the Kung Fu flicks. Mm -hmm. The porno flicks right. and the little smoke shop stores and shit like that. Fake ID spots, all that. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and can't forget the picture man. Right? Can't forget the picture man. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like um, the New Music Seminar has been involved with the New Music Seminar since 87. So, you know, like 88. Uh, 88, I, I don't know if I got into it or not, but 87, I had battled Mel and Kaz. Yeah, you talked about it. And I kind of won. Right, so boom. So now 88, I really ain't delved too much into it. So now 89, my album coming out, so I'm like, I'm, big, I'm bigger than the seminar now. Right. So then, you know, but at the same time, motherfuckers say, yo, you need to touch down, you need to keep base with that because that's a worldwide event. So now by 90, in 1990, Cat walk up to me and he said, Yo, King Sun, man, yo, I remember I came here last year, man, and you told me, man, I told you, like, they ain't feeling my music or whatever, whatever. I'm from the West Coast, man, and, you know, and the cat came up to me and he was like, Yo, you know what I mean? He said, I just want to tell you, you know what I mean? You told me, like, Yo, though hip hop is what you want it to be, it don't matter where you from or what you do or whatever, man, and I'm doing my thing now, man. And I just want to thank you for that, man. You ever need anything, man, you call me, man, you holler at me. I'm like, all right, peace, God, boom, boom. That was MC Hammer. Mm. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> so, it, you know, it's like, yo, the 89, that's when Hammer was popping. So, you know, boom. So now it's like we got a room at the Marriott, just the 1990 Marriott and shit like that. So we go to 42nd, I got a room up in there, so we go around uh, 42nd Street to get some Phillies, burn something, grab some brews and shit. So when we go to walk in the store between uh, 7th and 8th Avenue, which it might now be the Disney store, McDonald's, one of them shits that's right over there. Right. So me and the guards, you know, we go to walk in the store, but we see some motherfuckers standing outside with long ass jerry curls, some khaki shorts, some Chuck Taylors on, like with white beaters on, but they all tattooed up. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at shit, so the guards, one of the guards was like, yo, what the fuck is these niggas, man? What the fuck these niggas with all that jerry curls shit? And I was like, nah, God, chill, man. I said, yo, that's some L.A. shit, because I had already been out to L.A. Yeah. I said, nah, God, that's some L.A. real, those are some real niggas right there, man. Them, they ain't rap niggas. Trust and believe that. Right. So it, it wound up being Shorty and J.D. from the lynch mob. Mm. So uh, Jinx, Sir Jinx, which is cute, man, and T-Bone, they was in the store. So then, you know, boom, bang. So I'm, I'm looking at him, and Shorty was saying, he was like, wow, these niggas look like they just came out of jail. So I'm like, okay, I said, yo, man, peace, man, what's good, man? I said, yo, y'all from West Coast, right? They was like, yeah, we 
we know the homie King Son, though. Like, we've seen your videos. So I said, yo, peace, man. What's good? Y'all, what, you know, what y'all doing now? And he was like, yo, we here at the seminar shit. So I said, all right, man, look. You know what I mean? I'm going to get some brew. Y'all drink? He was like, yeah. I said, yo, y'all know y'all smoke, right? He was like, yeah. I said, well, we'll get a couple of boxes of Phillies. I'm going to get some brew. And we're going to go chop it up. I got a room over the Marriott. They was like, all right, no doubt. So then, boom, we start kicking it. So when we start kicking it, it said, you know, Shorty like, yo, man, you know, we walking from 42nd to the Marriott. And uh, Shorty was like, nah, man, you know, I'm going to tell you what we really doing. Here. It's like, you know, we ain't really no rap motherfuckers. And, you know, we just, uh, we go by the name of Lynch Mob because we fuck with Cube. I was like, Cube, Ice Cube? So he was like, yeah. So I said, yeah, I heard he broke off from N.W.A. and all that. So he said, yeah, man. He said, what happens is whenever Cube do a show, that Easy e and my conception send people to go jump them. Wherever you're doing the show at, they, they pay for niggas to fly out there and they run up on Cube and be like, yo, well, fuck it, let's handle this in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So when they go in the bathroom to fight, uh, Easy and them have motherfuckers block off the doorway where Cube can't get out and they jump them. Mm -hmm. So Cube went to the hood and got Shorty and JD and them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm vibing with the motherfuckers and anything. So I said, well, Dave, look, he said, so if you see us beefing, you know, just fall back. He said, if you see us squabbling, just fall back because we got beef. And that's why we out here. We really just out here protecting Cube and shit. I said, well, if y'all motherfuckers start beefing in New York, it's my beef. You feel me? Whoever run up on y'all motherfuckers while y'all with me ran up on me. And that's how it's going to go. So we hit the Marriott. We going up the escalator, boom, bang, right? Mm -hmm. We going up the escalator. So when we get to the lobby where everything is at, we see above the law. So when we see above the law, I came up first and then Lynch Mall and niggas was behind me. I don't know where Cube is at. So when we get up to the lobby and shit, it's like, I see Gomac and Laylaw and them cats, and I know all of them from videos and shit, so I'm like, they're like, yo, what up, homie, King son? So I dap them up, but they don't realize, like, I'm ready to slap them up, <laughs> you feel me? Right. So when I say peace to them, I walk, step over to the left and just parlay. So now Shorty and them came up behind me. So when Shorty and them came up, he started having words with Laylaw and them, and they're like, yeah, nigga, what, what, so what, boom, thanks. So I'm sketching all this shit, so... Shorty from the Lynch Mob was like, yo, fuck it, nigga, what y'all want to do? Nigga, ain't nothing but a thing. Let's go to the bathroom. He's like, yeah, nigga, let's go to the bathroom. So when they start walking to the bathroom, I start walking to the bathroom. It was me and three of my dudes from Lower East Side. So we start walking to the bathroom. So then as they walk to the bathroom, that's how they always get killed. So before they got to the bathroom, Shorty snuffed one of them. Wow. Mm. And one of them niggas snuffed Shorty. Wow. Then I snuffed the dude who snuffed shorty. Wow. <laughs> There's some big bouncer niggas that I know. And they was from the Bronx, niggas snuffed me. Wow. Like, oh, shit. I turned around like, yo. Because I knew they was with some Bronx niggas. But, you know, I guess those my conception had paid for them niggas right. from Rude Boy. Which Rude Boy was down with uh, Bugs. And Bugs was the nigga that had Bandula records put out Law for Nest. And then Bugs was the nigga that backed Puffy. Oh, we got to get and into that because I never shit. even knew, knew about that. Yeah, you never knew about Bugsy? Nah. Mm -mm. Bugs was the motherfucker that, remember Wolf that got killed in Atlanta, Puff Man? Yeah. That was Bugs Man. Okay. All right, you ever heard of a story that Puff had a dude out in Vegas and Shook Knight and them had him in the club and they pissed on him and all that shit? Nah, I never heard about that one. But that's crazy. Well, well nah, that was Boggs. Boggs is a real gangster Jamaican nigga from up in the Bronx. And Shook Knight and them? Yeah. Okay, we'll get Shug into that Knight one because I don't want to switch stories because that one. Okay, right, so right, y'all right, in the right, bathroom. Right. Anyway, <laughs> mm. I'm going to write that shit down. Anyway, they was Boggs and them. These was niggas from the Bronx. Yeah. But they was like my height, like six, seven, like muscle bearing bodyguard right. niggas. They just was standing around, so I ain't know. So when I snuffed the nigga from LA, wow, one of them niggas snuffed me. So when the nigga snuffed me, I turned around, snuffed him back, then another nigga grabbed me, like around, like grabbed me from behind. Yeah. And so I do, he grabbed me from behind, he holding my arms, another one, 
that motherfucker went to hit me like wrestling. Yeah. So I had shimmy down. So when I shimmy down, I went down to one knee. And you know the long tables that they have the tablets and shit on, right? When I shimmy down to one knee, I came back up with the table like, wow, on some wrestling shit. <laughs> and like three of them motherfuckers. So when I hit the niggas, they was like, oh, shit, yo. And that's when niggas knew it was really beef. Right. So we start wilding out and shit, right? So then I said, Zulu, you know, because I'm down with Zulu Nation. So I was like, Zulu, good stop, oh. So Zulu motherfuckers started coming. Right. So Shorty fighting two motherfuckers over there, right? So we run this, I run the Shorty, help him out. So them niggas run. So me and Shorty run, JD getting jumped. So we run the JD and we help him out. T Bone getting stomped out when his Jordans came off and shit. So we running around. Yeah. And while all this shit going down, Q, the security motherfucker snuck Q about the exit. Now, I'm going to tell snuck, you where this is. Oh, they is. snuck them out the exit, you said? The, like the security motherfuckers like put like a, a, a hood over them and ran them out the exit. Right. The, the fire exit like next to the bathroom. So we still up in the lobby in the Marriott on the eighth floor beefing. Now, you remember the movie Straight Outta Compton? Mm-hmm. Remember when they got a scene that they say the Marriott Marquis? And when the guys was going up the escalator? Right, they was going up the escalator? Right. That was this fight. It sound like it. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask that you was, that. That was this fight. It wasn't no NWA there. It was me, JD, Shorty, which is Jerome X from the Nation of Islam now. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cube, Cube was standing in uh, the... Uh, not the Park of Meridian. He was staying in a hotel on the, um, he was staying in a hotel on like Fifth Avenue, uh, one of them expensive joints with Bobby. I told you Bobby Brown and Whitney was staying. Right. When we had fuck with them that time. Right, right. When you did Shirt Kings, they were staying in that hotel. So Cube was only over at the hotel. So, you know, we fighting and everything, boom, you know, I got a little nine and shit, you know, we a little roughed up and shit, but Lynch Ball and niggas like, yo, King Son, yo, you the truth, man. I said, yo, and I said, yo, ain't no niggas from West Coast getting on no planes. Anybody that's here, stay in here, Zulu Nation gonna make sure that anything locked. Right. You feel me? This yeah. when B.O. was alive, and B.O. was the truth. That was like my brother. So mm-hmm. Zulu Nation was like, ain't nobody moving. So we took a cab over to Cube Hotel and shit, right? Oh, so Cube wasn't with y'all when y'all was at this fight? No, he was at the fight, but he they ran him off. Okay, so they seen something they, going on. They just, all right. Right, they grabbed Cube and said, peace, and left us there fighting. Right. Because originally when you was telling the story, you said you didn't know where Cube was. So I was a little confused, that's why. No, I mean, I ain't know where he was on the floor. Oh, got you, got you. He was there, though. It's the seminar. Like, oh, everything, all those okay, big-ass okay. ballrooms is on the eighth floor. Right. We came from the store, but they was with Cube. So they wouldn't have, if Cube wasn't there, they wouldn't have been there. Right. Got so you. Cube was there. So when we came up the escalator, we start squabbling. Bah, bah, bah. Right. And Cube, they ran Cube off like... Whoever was in security or whatever, I grabbed him and ran him out to exit. And he dipped and he was at the motherfucking hotel while we were still there fighting. Okay, I got it now. You feel me? Yeah. So now I got a relationship. So then I go with Lynch Mob over to Cube Room. He was like, yo, what's up, Cube, man? What's up, man? Nice. He was like, yo, man, you remember me? I said, yeah, man. That pal said, yo, we all good. So now, you know, Lynch Mob motherfucker like, yo, you should have seen King Son. Yo, hit this motherfucker King Son. Stop that motherfucker, man. Hit this nigga with the table, man. Yo, that nigga the truth. So we vibing now. We start burning this shit like that. So Cube on the phone with Dre. So I ain't talking to Dre. So I said, yo. They was like, yo, chill, chill, man. Uh, Q talking to Dre. I said, yo, tell that nigga Dr. Dre, man. One of them motherfuckers, they was like, what Team Sun got to do with it? That's the nigga from New York. Where he got to do? I said, one of them niggas punched me in my face for no reason, nigga. I ain't had shit to do with that. One of them <laughs> niggas punched me. I said, so them niggas is not leaving. I said, ain't no nigga getting on the plane, so they better drive home, nigga. I said, that's on Zulu, Ben Bond, and anything I love. So then Dre called my conception. Mm. My conception had to fly out there. I'm like, where these law, where these uh, Buck the Law niggas is at? I'm getting all these motherfucking West Coast niggas, man. If you ain't Lynch Mob and Ice Cube nigga, ain't none of you motherfuckers leaving here tonight. 
So oh. Mike Conception, that's a nigga in the wheelchair. We all in the same gang, remember him? Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm getting ready to do something with him. Right, all right. Well, he could tell you about the shit, too. So right. he, he flew out here and, 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 and talked to motherfuckers and got the shit tightened up. So now from there, that's my relationship with Lynch Mob. So we cool. So next my, next time Lynch Mob and Cuban them come back to New York, like Shorty will call me. You know, I talk, I talk to Shorty moms. I talk to J.D. grandmoms and shit. They family. So like, hey, motherfucker, we coming back out there, son. All right, boom. So when they come out, now they done cut off their jerry curls. Mm. You feel me? Right. And Shorty is like, yo, I'm Muslim now. I'm, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm Brother Jerome and me and JD, like me and JD always horse playing hot box and shit. Like, mm -hmm. boom, boom. He, JD is the one that got locked up for murder. Mm. You know what I mean? So, but, you know, we, we, we peoples now. We shit, we fuck with each other. So, you know, Q come into town, I'm like, all right, boom, whatever they say. And Shorty, like, yo, bro, come through. So we come through. They did the Apollo. You know, we came through, you know, I come through and shit like that. So we cool, and it's like, I was fucking with Ice-T and the Syndicate, and I gave Ice Cube a tape that I did, because I was on Boss Records, Kev Childs. You know who Kevin Childs is? He, he run um, Don Diva, right, or one of those? No, right, Childs. Don Diva, Kev Childs, right, you were on there. Yeah, so right. Kev Childs had a label called Boss Records. Right. So I was I was an artist that he had signed and shit. So my first song, the the A side was called Sipping Brandy, the B side was called In Pursuit of Town, and the chorus was the guy wicked, yeah my shit don't want second down the guy wicked, yeah my shit running up and down the town the guy wicked, she living like a sad face clown the guy wicked, but see if he come for a kick her down, some girl he that way they they don't anyway that wicked shit right popped mm -hmm. off. Now, I see, like, I was fucking with Cuban them, so I gave Cuba a cassette. I said, yo, when you go back to L.A., you fuck with Ice T, right? So he said, yeah. I said, get this to Ice, because Ice going to put this on the Syndicate album, because I'm down with Syndicate, with Everlast and Law Finesse and mm -hmm. Raw Breed and motherfuckers like that. So Ice never got the motherfucking tape. So the next time when Cube came out with a song, it was wicked. Mm. You feel me? Right. So I'm I'm in the crib and shit, and it's like Cube shit came out. I'm in the crib. It's about like six in the morning and shit. You know, I'm on some music writing shit and all that. And so you know, me and my girl and shit. So I'm like, you know, like the Cube shit came out. I'm like, yo. I said, damn, babe, what the fuck did he use? Like, you know how you listen to a motherfucker? Like, what did he sample with? Like, where that chorus came from? And my girl was like, yo, that's your chorus. I said, what you mean? She was like, yo, that's your chorus, but in pursuit of town. So then I played it, and I was like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I said, but why would he use my shit? And then before that, he had came with jacket for beats. Like, I don't give a fuck who you is. I take your shit. Right. And me, I just took it literally, like. Right, so you took it out. He nigga, took like, your I, joint. <laughs> right, nigga, I fought for you. Type shit, so I, I, I called uh, Shorty and I called IC. This morning we had cell phones, we was on three ways. So I called Mick Benson, Mick Benson called Ice, then I called Shorty from Lynch Mob, and Shorty called Q. So we all on three ways. Who you Mick way. Benson? I called Mickey Benson. Oh, yeah, I know Mickey. Yeah, the fuck with Ice. That's the one who put me in with Ice. Mickey with all the furs. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he cool as hell. Yeah, promotion. Yeah, he old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anything, that's what, whenever whenever I'm about to make a move, a reckless move in hip-hop, I call Mick, because that's Zulu Nation. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it from a, 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 I get the celebrity hip-hop perspective from Ice-T, Melly Mel, and Cass. They'd be like, yo, you buggy, man, sit down. I sit down. They'd be like, nah, motherfucker, yo, go do your numbers, and I'm going to go do my numbers. Like, I, I handle this hip hop shit like mafia shit. I talk to the motherfuckers up. Right. You feel me? So I talked to Cube, and then when I called them niggas, it was like 3 in the morning because it's 6 in the morning in New York. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Kim answered the phone. I said, Yo, Kim, you know, sorry to bother you. This King Sun man. Is Cube available? Well, Sunny Sweet. Well, could you wake him up? Because I got Ice T and Shorty and a bunch of cats on the phone. Well, what is this about, son? Kim, could you just wake up? Q, please, and put him on the phone. So I said, Q, man, 
I said, yo, when I asked you to get that cassette to Ice T, man, you ne he, Ice never got it. So he was like, nah, I ain't seen Ice. So Ice was like, yo, Cube, I ain't seen you whoop, 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 and you ain't missed. So Cube was like, oh, I must have forgot. I said, yeah, man, but if was you forgetting to give him the tape, you fuck around in that new wicked shit you got. That's from my song. Nah, man, dude made that up. I said, dude ain't made that up, man, because I made this shit up on my own shit. I said, yo, when you come to New York, man, have a sit down with me, because that's what Zulu Nation used to do when Al, Al had a beef with Ice T and whatever, Cool Mo D. Whenever niggas had beef, you had to get with Zulu Nation, come to New York and squash it and see if it was worth something popping. Right. So when he came to New York, he ain't holla at me. Mm. You feel me? Actually, Shorty holla at me. Yo, we gonna be in New York, brother, but he said, uh, no, Shorty said, yo, Cube gonna be in New York, but we ain't gonna be with him. Mm. So I'm like, what you mean? So he had Dub C and Crazy Tunes. He had Tunes DJing for him, so he had Dub acting security, and they came to the Palladium on 14th Street. So I paid to get in, and he ain't holler at me and shit like that. So me and like four of the guys, I paid to get up twice to get up in there, because I knew niggas was looking for me. Like they was gonna see, like, oh, King's a whole oh, chill, chill. I was trying to try to go on this King's son, so I just paid, walked in, got up in there, and was like, you know, I said, yo, the guys are like, how are we gonna do this, God? What's the plan? I said, now nah, I'm gonna parlay till I see him and run up on him. I told him if he don't get at me, when I see him, I'm gonna bust him in his motherfucking face. <laughs> so. <laughs> now, it's real talk. I know, but it's, it's just real talk. Funny. He know it is. He right. know it is. And anybody else, I told you, ain't no hair on my tongue, God. Right. So what I did, I'm parlaying. Now, at the time, Funkmaster Flex was rocking the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody there, Heavy, Latifah, Moni, So Trent, hold on. You at the Palladium or the tunnel? The Palladium. Oh, you just said Flex was rocking the tunnel. All right, because you, okay. Now, Flex used to, this was before the tunnel. Okay, so but you whatever said, was going on, it was some big ass shit at the Palladium. Got you, got you. And Flex was there. Mm hmm. Okay, but you're saying he was, this is when he was rocking the tunnel. Okay, I got you now. Right, so I go up to the booth, holler at Flex, he in the DJ booth and shit. So I told Flex, I said, yo, you know about the beef, because they had mentioned the little beef in the sauce, but in the back pages, like on the little strip. So I had like a little square picture of me. Like it appeared to be some beef with King Sun and friend Ice Cube over Ice Cube, um, you know, taking King Sun's, you know, hook or whatever, and this, that, and the third. So... I was in the sauce at this time, so, you know, so I'm there, and uh, it's like, so I'm talking to Flex, I don't really want to throw him under the bus, but Flex was like, you know, you from up to Bronx, where we from, so Flex said, look, man, I stopped chilled up in the booth with him, so he said, Q about to go on right now, so what you gonna do? I said, I'm gonna run up on the stage, so Flex was like, well, whatever you do, look, he said, that's, if this is the microphone, they go to volume, I'm going to get me a drink downstairs. You feel me? <laughs> so he pretty much gave me the house mic from, from a cop and shit. If anybody that's listening, anybody that hears, they'll tell you, yo, that's just what happened. So Q would come out, he performing and shit. You know, he got Dub, his hype man, and Crazy Tunes, DJ, rest in peace, my brother Tunes. And uh, Q, you know, he, he doing all this shit. So then I waited till he did the song Be True to the Game. Game, you know, like Be True to Hip Hop, nigga. Mm -hmm. So when he said that shit, when he was doing that shit, he did Be True to the Game, and the lights went out. So then I turned up the mic, I said, yeah, man, I told you when you come to New York, motherfucker, you better see me. I said, you ain't, you ain't come to see me, but I'm seeing you right now. The crowd thought that was his show. Because <laughs> my voice was deep, resonating, right? So then the lights came back on, and Cube and Delta niggas was looking around like, oh, shit. I said, yeah, this your man, King's son, nigga. I told you, you can't come to New York, nigga, without seeing me. Right. So, you know, the crowd like, oh, shit, oh, shit, this, that, and the third, right? So then Q 
cube looking at shit. And so he looking around like he don't know what's up. So then me and the guard, the guards were like, yo, let's run up on him now because everybody know. So when I'm walking out of the DJ booth, you know, remember Fred Bugs, Bugsy? Right, right, from, from uh, 98.7? Right, Bugs came in. He was like, hey, what up, King Sub? So I was like, yeah, peace. And I walked out the booth, so I'm walking down the steps. So I know the security bouncing niggas is running up. <laughs> they running up <laughs> And we walking down smooth, right? So they ain't fucking with me. Bugs, he said, when they ran up in the booth, they stopped fucking them up. <laughs> because they thought it was him that was on the mic. Right. By this time, I'm already down by the stage and shit. So then I get by the stage. So when I get by the stage, when you cube see me, he was like, yeah, man, what's up, man? What's up, man? You know, motherfuckers talking about that big thing shit. And it's like, you still ain't gonna say my motherfucking name. So what I bitch this shit, nigga? If I did a nigga skit, if I went platinum, what a nigga stress me for? What a nigga stress me? Now, B.O. and Zulu is doing security on the stage. So they like, hold up, son, chill. I said, you hear him, right? He's saying he bit my shit. So you see Latif and Heavy D and them having Heavy D like, yo, son, chill, man, chill. I'm like, man, fuck that. And I had like a semi-cast on my right hand because I don't know how I cut my hand somehow like early before this shit. So I had like a little half a cast. Right. So this nigga bouncing around on stage. So what? Niggas don't know this cube, nigga. Y'all know what I do. So he bounced around two motherfucking close to the side of the stage where I was on. I just caught his ass like, bah. Mm. Rocked him. When I rocked him, motherfucker fell like, boom. Like, oh, shit. Like, boom. Then Dub, uh, like, tools ain't moved, but Dub looked at me. He my man since 87, motherfucker. Dub, like, flashed a pistol. I said, Dub, you gonna shoot me, nigga? You gonna shoot me? You really wanna do that here right now tonight? Dub was like, yo, I don't even know what's going on, son. I don't know what's going on. I said, you heard what's going on. Nigga, you know what's going on. So then that's when Bam was like, yo. Bam grabbed me like, yo, hold up, man. Hey, King Sun, man, come with me. So then the, the chick who, was, who, who ran the motherfucking uh, Palladium, Bam took me to the office. So she was like, who the fuck are you? And Bam grabbed the Source magazine and opened it up to the page. Bam said, this is who this is right here. So she read this shit, so she was like, well, why did Ice Cube let us know he had beef? I said, because he didn't know that he had beef like that. Mm. So they wanted to, the Palladium was going to sue him for not letting them know he had beef. You know, and Bam was like, nah, this King's son, this is a good dude. He's Zulu, so I got him. Right. You feel me? Right. So that's where the beef came from. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. And see, he, if he had lynch mob, even, even with Dub and them, see, Dub and them, see, Cube is a good dude, man, and... I'm going to say this out in the interview, and I, cause like I said, ain't no hair in my tongue. I'm God body, man. I don't got to suck no dick. I done made records dissing them. I made niggas in New York don't suck no dick. You know what I mean? I made a record called Hum These Nuts, Dissing <laughs> Cube. And it's, you know, Hum it's these like, nuts. <laughs> Hum These Nuts. Look that shit up on Cold Chillin'. You feel me? Yeah. And see, the science is crazy that you know, you got a lot of motherfuckers buckled to a motherfucker that got money. Like, niggas buckled a puff. You know what I mean? All these motherfuckers, no disrespect to the dead, rest in peace. All Any motherfucking rapper that says Biggie Smalls was the greatest rapper of all times or of Yacht time or whatever time Biggie was out is a motherfucking liar, man. Mm. 